Hello everybody, today we are here in Nova Scotia with the founder of Adored Beast, Julianne Lee, and we are at the facility where they make the product Adored Beast and they package it and ship it out, which is super amazing. We got a whole tour today. It's really amazing to see how uh, Adored Beasts are willing to show the transparency of how the Adored Beast product is made how it's packaged, labeled, and then actually shipped out from here, which eventually gets to our homes and then fed to our pets. So it's just amazing just to see the transparency and them answering the questions that we have as pet parents and, and what you may have as pet parents because they are willing to answer your questions. So let's take you on that tour that we got today. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do yeah, it. Let's do it. <laughs> I can't believe you guys are here. Yeah. <laughs> You we know, can last really year, it's like, oh my gosh, now they're here. Everybody knows by now we absolutely love Adored Beast products, but we even love it more now, I think, because <laughs> we got to know the owners of the supplement company who makes uh, Adored Beast from the sourcing side of things and the way that how closely you work with them together. It's just great to know that the products are actually 100% what they say they are and we can just mm -hmm. fully trust not only you but also the company who makes it which i think today in the pet industry is something that is really questioned a lot not just the the company the brand itself mm -hmm. but also the manufacturers of the products when i when we were just talking right now it's like it really came clear how long it took me but i started this project six years ago taking it from the formulas from my vet hospital and putting them into the public. And I've been working with this company for four years. So we didn't start launching Adored Beast for was it has been four years. And it took me two years was to find a company that I felt comfortable with. Uh, it's not a massive manufacturing company. It's called a compounding facility. So the owner, Leslie, is a human naturopathic doctor. So instantly we clicked. That was the first thing. And the fact that I could actually sit down with an owner that still has hands on, um, I don't even want to use the word control, but um, involvement with, with the company was massive for me. I had spoken with and gone in to speak with really big, reputable human supplement manufacturing companies to do, to do the formula, to compound the formulas for me. And it, it, it was overwhelming. Like I felt like I was in a car factory, like massive machines. And it was, it, it was super interesting and like kudos on them for being able to take supplements and natural products to that level. But it didn't feel right for me because mm. I would, it would take, I wasn't even able to speak to the, you know, the head person that was involved with sourcing or the, like it was, I was always channeled through these massive channels to try to get to somebody. And I never, ever got my real answers or questions answered. Yeah. So when I met Leslie, I always say to her that I, I, I drive them insane. And, um, but it's awesome because we're so connected. Like we, we speak all the time, like all the time, if there's a new formula coming up and we're sourcing specific ingredients or we're look like I am so involved in all of that. I couldn't do it with somebody else. It's just a completely different beast than, than the big manufacturing companies. Oh, here some, oh, okay. here's the adored beast cranberry, um, the oh, adored okay. beast marshmallow and the adored beast uh, enzyme blend. This is the lurch. That is a very yes. important ingredient yeah. yeah, and it's a trademark product. I've been very fortunate to find some distributors within Canada that I've met, that I've been to their facilities. I understand what their criteria is for their um, purchasing power. They go and visit these factories and vet the, the actual manufacturers. I love your values and I love how you put your values into the business because it's just something that this almost lost today in the pet world. So 
yeah, this has been really, really inspiring Thank for us. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. You were talking to us earlier about how when you had a shortage in um, mm, in the one of the large. ingredients in large, yeah, and you mm -hmm. couldn't get that. So mm -hmm. maybe you can talk a little bit about that as well. From a, the, from that perspective, uh, you know, this company falls into the you know standards of practice and stuff of doing professional compounding. So it's already way up here. But even with that in mind, uh, we ran out of larch and larch is in all of our products. And she immediately called me and said, we have a problem. Yeah. Our larch supplier just informed us that they have a, sh a shortage. Mm -hmm. So we are going to be running out of it. And this is what we are replacing it with for our naturopathic doctors and everybody's fine with it. So is that okay for us to do that with you? And I'm like, absolutely not. It's not okay for that. Mm -hmm. Like for people, I totally get it. Like that would be fine. This for me, I would not feed an animal. Yeah. I just don't, I just won't use it because one, I don't have 20 years experience using it. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to change. I don't know what would happen to an animal that's taking it, mm -hmm. but more so that's not a prebiotic that I personally agree with. Do I think it's a terrible prebiotic? I'm, it doesn't matter. That's not, that wasn't the prebiotic that I tell everyone why I use it. And, you know, my research yep. has gone into mm -hmm. it. So I wrote a letter to all my stores and to everybody and saying that this is the reason why, and we could have actually done it. And there would have been no, hiccups in, in you getting your products, but I can't do that. So chances are we're going to be back ordered and back ordered with a lot of things, not yeah. just one little thing. Mm -hmm. Um, probably more than half of our, of, of our, of our products. And that's what I did. So if in the future, if we make an, an order an with order? the Dorothy, yeah. it all happens here and yeah. you are the ones who actually put the labels on there. We do. Absolutely. <laughs> so it's very important for us that we ensure that all the labels are um, stored in the right places. We certainly mm -hmm. never want a situation where we put the wrong labels on the products. Yeah. So with Julie uh, expanding her business, there's um, with this Korea and these other countries, we have to be really on top of and yeah. make sure and this is my my passion to be able to ensure that um, I know where everything is and that my staff knows where and we have measures in place to ensure that uh, everything is double checked what happens when big companies run out of things they are which happens all the time right so that's why that's why this bylaw or whatever it's considered is put in place is so that manufacturing doesn't have to stop they are allowed to continue to produce and put in an, an, a similar ingredient that will get them through until they can get that ingredient back and they don't have to actually change the label. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, they, they're given a certain amount of time and if they still can't get that ingredient, then they have to change the label. So and they don't have to let us know. The no, parents. Yeah. no, no one knows. Mm -hmm. The stores don't know that are buying the product. Like nobody knows so long as it's within a certain amount of time and you put the old ingredient back in before you have to change a label. I was shocked. I have to admit, I was really shocked that, that for people even you can change an ingredient mm -hmm. and not even inform a, a, the public. Just being able to know that, be able to work with a company that goes, okay, here, here's, here's our alternatives. You know, here's where they're coming from. This is what blah, blah, blah. We we're, often able to problem solve independently compared to a bigger manufacturer. You don't problem solve with a bigger manufacturer. It just gets done yeah. for you, right? Yeah. Like it just production is everything. So, and I'm not saying that's wrong mm -hmm. or bad, yeah. but what I am saying is that's just not the way I roll with exactly. the company. Yeah. Well, it just <laughs> keeps me going I'm so glad it took me two years. I'm yeah. so glad I was really yeah. anal about this. I'm yeah. so glad it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and this just makes like, it was just one more thing to say to me, this is where I need to be. Yeah. You know? And like to us as pet parents, like it makes us feel so much more comfortable, uh, feeding adored beast because 
I love companies that uh, like that have people in there that are not um, sacrificing <laughs> values for money. And because that's very much how we, how we do everything that we do. Well, um, it, that makes my heart happy because it is, it is, um, it's not easy maintaining that integrity because, you know, the bigger we get, the more like everything becomes, you know, like stepped up. Right. So we actually uh, open up the bags. We uh, check the certificate of analysis and any other documents like the material safety data sheet, the allergen statement as well. So we want to make sure um, that we make sure that uh, it's the right product and the color is the same, the density is the same. So there's a lot of criteria and we test everything here um, visually. Um, we take the density, we take the, uh, the tasting, whether it's soluble or not. So there's a variety of tests that we do and we have a color chart also that shows um, the color of this material so we know exactly what color to call it um, against uh, reference mm. so we got a lot of very big orders it's true I mean we were crunching numbers and we were looking at things to, because we ultimately want to be able to have it affordable so that I can reach more animals and help more animals but then we're looking at it and we're going okay if we flip into this machine then we aren't employing 15 people that are actually hands-on working at this company. And I'm so about the bigger picture. So not just about the ingredients of what going in the bigger picture and how it physiologically changes your animal's, you know, body, but what is really the bigger picture? You know, like, yes, we left to look at carbon footprint. We got to look at all of that stuff, but we also look to look at what I call the energy of the medicine or the energy of the product or in whatever. And when I know that there's actually someone's hands and somebody's heart and that there's so much more to that with somebody doing it by hand, you know, am, are we going to have to go to machines eventually? We will to a degree, but I will still be absolutely paying attention to what that looks like. Is there still, you know, I don't want to decrease the amount of staff. So we're going to have to figure it out. That's just sort of my, I'm, I'm not, I'm probably the most nightmare business partner to ever have on the planet <laughs> because it's like, no, 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 no that's not going to work. <laughs> you know, we gotta, and I don't just shut it down. We find a solution, right? Like, it's like, how do we continue to employ people yet still get machines and not have to lay anybody off and keep this as a community. And, you know, like even from a local, like this is very local. Like, that's what I was yeah. saying to you. Like mm-hmm. why there was this tiny little company not even a company. And now when I actually think of what adored beast is touching, like it's, it's pretty crazy. Right. And, and it's, it's the energy of the whole business, not just, not just the product. Look at him. (laughs) (laughs) He has a lot to uh, take care of. Yeah. He does. (laughs) How many do you do a day? Like um, like if, if you don't have to make like all the encapsulations on it, you can like do like 10,000. 10, wow. One person. Yeah. And then when we get the big adored beast orders, that just blows us right out of yeah. water. So we need sort of special people to be able to look after the mixing yeah. and the bottling of this. And because they have two labels on the bottles, the one on the top and the one on the side, yeah. and the one on the bottom too, it's a little bit more labor than these ones. Yeah our retained samples. So every time we do a compound, we actually take about a two gram sample, put it in a baggie, put a desiccant in it. For the products that have probiotics, we store those uh, retained samples in the fridge so that they're kept fresh. But the other products that don't have any probiotics, then we keep in here. Wow. And what do you do that for? Well, we need to, uh, on occasion, we need to go back and actually retrieve these, compare the retained sample of one lot to against another. So all of the raw materials, we have retained samples and all of the compounded products, we always have to keep um, for at least 
two or three years, we have to keep the retained samples so we can compare them. And so this shows that um, the product, the weight has been verified by another individual. Um, it indicates which scale we use. Um, there's the lot number that we provide, the date that it was compounded. Like a lot of the big manufacturers would like in January make the, um, the product. products for the whole year. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if you get to the end of the year, the product is already kind of old. So mm -hmm. you do a lot of small batching mm -hmm. for Adored Beast. I like the idea that we're just making everything as fresh as possible. And the uh, expiry dates that we put on the bottoms of their products will have, I think now, um, Dion had described it was 16 months from the date of manufacture. That's only because the probiotics that are in almost all of their products um, you know, we feel that this would be a very safe expiry date to actually put on the bottles, but they would probably be very good uh, years after that. Maybe some of the activity of the probiotics would decrease a little bit and their degradation is actually very, very um, delayed. So, and they come to us even more powerful than what the certificate of analysis says. So we may ask for a product that's 60 billion colony forming units per gram, but when we look at the certificate of analysis, it's often 120 or even 130 billion. So we're getting a lot more than we actually have expected to be receiving, which is a wonderful thing. Adored beast is like a beast to me. And I can't, because of, of all the animals that it's affecting and their families, I can't just take it and give it to someone else yeah. and go, awesome, I heard you're the best manufacturer in the world and blah, 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 blah. Maybe I'm a control freak. I don't know. But I, I just can't do that. I have to be, I have to be involved in it on a very grassroots, even if we're massive, I have to maintain that somehow. It's uh, yeah. I I I have a, I'm speechless. Like because <laughs> you really don't see companies like this today anymore. Like it's, I mean, in the natural field, you you still see more of them, of course. Mm -hmm. But even with us, when we were we were actually looking at making our own food in Dubai as well. But it was so hard for us to find anybody who we trust. So we just said, no, we're not doing it. It's so, hard. Because I'm definitely not saying that big manufacturers are bad, because. I also feel like there's enough sick animals and sick people to go around from a business perspective to the end of time. And I feel like Adored Beasts will, will attract and be and where we're supposed to be by maintaining the integrity of it. And it is a lot of work. It's a lot of, it's a lot more work on my side. We have to employ a lot more people because I'm doing so much that I need help doing it. It either fits with you or it doesn't fit with you. And that's what my business partner and I have come to finally come to terms on is that that's how it has to be. It's just going to fit with some people and maybe not with others, but it has to, ultimately it has to fit with me because it's been my life's work and I can't, it changes. As I learn, of course, one minute yeah. I think I know everything and the of next course. minute I think oh, I know absolutely nothing. That has been our life too. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's just crazy. Yeah. Um, so it will evolve with me as a person, but ultimately I have to go to bed at night feeling like I'm doing the best I can with what I have and that I'm going to learn and grow every day. In today's pet world, it's so hard to find a brand that we personally trust. So today coming here and getting this whole tour just showed us that it is possible to make ethical products that are great for our pets and that are ethically processed and made and brought to us. And it's just, it's absolutely amazing. We got to see how Julianne Lee and the manufacturer get together and have a well relationship to make sure that they deliver the best product as possible to our pets.